Hey, what up everybody? It's Dungeon Master back with another quick build. This week, we're gonna make something quick and simple. This little raft. Stick around after the credits and we'll get right into it. Okay gang, so the first thing that we need to do to make our raft is assemble our dowels. And for this I'm going to be using some cheap dowels that I got at Michael's. There's 15 of them in this package and this should be more than enough to make everything that we need to use uh, to make this uh, this project today. So I'm gonna open these up and uh, cut them up, measure them, and see what we're working with. So this is what we've got for our dowels, and I'm thinking of making a raft that's big enough for a, an entire party of player characters to ride on. So what we've got here is this total package of dowels without any glue or anything on it is, look, just happens to be three inches wide, and I think that that gives us plenty of room to maneuver a party of characters. Now we need to figure out how long it's gonna be, and I'm thinking five inches would give us ample room to have a small kind of shelter in the back and an area up front. Now I could make it four by six, and that would make it slightly larger, and I think that that's what I'm gonna do. So what I wanna do is I wanna measure six inches on these dowels and cut them down to that length, and then I'm going to place them on the side until I've reached an additional inch on top of this. It should, it should be roughly five more dowels. It's fortunate these dowels just happen to be 12 inches, so it's gonna be just a matter of finding the halfway point on one of them and then cutting all of the rest to size. And I'm just gonna do what I usually do when I cut a, a wooden dowel, and I'm gonna roll my utility blade along it so I've got a nice score line, and then I'm just gonna snap it ever so gently. And that just leaves a little tiny protrusion of wood on the end and you can take care of that easily with just a, a simple emery board or a piece of sandpaper. I just got a simple emery board that I got from the dollar store. I'll just give it a couple of quick scritches. There we go. I'm just going to repeat that same process for the rest of these and we'll see what we got left. that it is about exactly five of these dowels per inch. So I know now if I wanna make it four inches wide, I'm gonna need 26 inch sections of dowel. So that was actually pretty easy to figure out and I just made it a little easier on myself by measuring six inches of tape here so that I could lay my dowel next to it and get it cut accurately without having to spend a whole lot of time measuring. And that's gonna save me a bunch of time cutting these down and getting them ready to make a process out of it so that I don't have to spend so much time doing it. As you can see now, I've got four inches by six inches worth of wood dowel to work with. And now I'm gonna take all of my dowels here and I'm gonna mark them up with my knife to give them a rough texture so make them look like they were hewn logs. I don't want to take out too much, I just want to kind of mark them up a little bit with the knife and get, uh, get them uneven. I don't want smooth logs.
so now what I want to do is glue these together. I'm going to make try to make that as easy as I can on myself by taping them down. I'm going to line them up with a piece of painter's tape and I'm going to lay and strip there. Try not to let them fall apart like I just did. That's one side and I'm going to do one more over here. My plan is to just use super glue to hold this whole thing together, but we're going to see how that goes because I don't know if the super glue is going to just stick to the craft mat or not. I want to make sure that they're tight together, as tight as they can be anyway with painter's tape. Okay, now that I got these all together, I'm going to attempt to glue them. I'm going to use some super glue liquid. This is my first time using this particular brand of super glue liquid. So we're gonna see how this goes. And I'm gonna put some drops here towards the end where the stuff meets and let, let it soak into the wood and let it fuse together. I suppose I could have done this part with hot glue. Big fan of my super glue. wait for this to dry and we'll take it apart, give a little bit of a flex, see how strong it is, maybe reinforce it with some more pieces and we'll move on. Okay, now I want to cut some reinforcing pieces on the other side. I know this doesn't quite look dry yet, but it's stuck together enough where I can manipulate it. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to glue a couple pieces to this side. So I want to cut some four inch sections of dowel. I'm going to cut two of them. Two four inch sections that are the exact width of my raft here. And I'm going to do to these what I did to the other logs and rough them up a little bit. Now I'm going to do the same thing here, I'm going to glue these like such, one on either end. And this will pretty much lock everything together once it's dry. So it's already set up. I'm going to do the same thing down here. Alright, now here I have some smaller um, craft dowels. This is the uh, the 3 16 dowel that I've used before from the hobby store. I believe this that these are uh, basswood dowels from uh, Michaels. I'm going to be using these to make a shelter. So I can do this slightly differently than I did with the others. I'm going to figure out a decent height for my shelter and I think it's going to be that and I'm going to say that that's close enough to three inches that I'm going to round it up and call it three inches. Now I can cut these a little easier, a little quicker. We're going to need four of these. And so what I want to do here now, I want to notch these out so that they can lay crossways like such. So that looks actually pretty good. So I'm going to use that as my measurement come down and put a notch. Just a small notch, not even halfway through. And I'm going to guess at the other side right there. And then I'm going to come in and notch that out slightly. And what happens is, is since you're putting a slot on either side, you pretty much prevent yourself from going over your line as long as you don't push too hard. And you can create pretty much a perfect notch in your little piece of wood that will fit a matching notch on the other side. So we're going to do the same thing, only now it'll be easier. And now, when they're glued together, they look like they're meant to be that way. I'm going to kind of set them on my raft here to find a good place to stick them in, and I think I think that works right there, about four, the fourth notch in, and I'm going to let it dry in that position. And that'll be the exact same thing that I do to this one. Okay, so 
this is going to be a little bit tricky because we need to measure a distance here that we want these things to be. I'm thinking what I'll do is I'll glue it together first and then I'll cut the excess. So I have this leftover piece from earlier that I'll use and I'm going to I'm going to glue this frame to the bottom. I'm going to leave a little space in the back because I think I'm going to add something to the back there. Glue that one down. That won't stick very well just yet. We need to make the frame correctly. A couple good drops on here. We'll have this come almost halfway out. Almost a two by two space inside this frame, which is gonna end up being the cabin. Okay, now I'm going to put some glue drops here to hold the top brace in. And this should give it strength and stability my eyeballs to measure it. Trim down the ends on this a little bit. Lay that right in there. Okay, now we have to let that sit and dry, and then when that's done, we'll move on. So I've grabbed myself another six inch piece of dowel, and I want to what I'm attempting to do anyway is create a mast in the center here, but it's going to be in between two dowels. So I'm going to drill it out and try to work this other dowel into it uh, without breaking anything, without snapping the, the project in half. So I'm going to just go slowly with this in between the two pieces. drill to make this a little to make this easier I also I'm gonna put the piece on top of my uh, cork rack so that I can drill through something without drilling into my table I'm just gonna go slow I've already got the hole started so this should be pretty easy as long as I stay slow I'm just gonna let the drill I'm just gonna let the weight of the drill do the work I'm not gonna put any pressure on it myself I'm just gonna start and go slow. That's it, we're in. got our mast set up. I'm going to uh, paint this with some watered down brown paint. For this I've got a uh, burnt umber brown that I mixed up myself but it's about a burnt umber. It's a little darker than normal burnt umber. So I'm just gonna put some in a cup here and mix some water in with it. I don't want to have my whole palette be covered with this because that's what will happen. So I'm just gonna use a small cup and I've got some uh, distilled water here that I'm just gonna put in to make it thinner. It sticks to the wood better I think. It makes the finish nicer on wood when you water it down a lot. And then it becomes more like a stain than anything. I'm sorry about that guys. I forgot to hit record when I did the first coat of paint on this. So I mixed up just some uh, dark uh, burnt umber paint and some water to do the base coat on this. I just mix the paint really thin, quite a bit of water, not quite to the point where it's uh, translucent. And um, on my second coat now, like I said, and in between coats, I'm letting it just soak into the wood and dry as much as possible. And if I want, if I'm feeling impatient, like I usually do, I'll hit it with my uh, blow dryer. The thinness of the paint helps it to seep into the wood takes a little bit longer to dry that way, but the result is a much better texture on the wood. You can actually make out the wood grain. And you can see striping in here 
where the super glue is. So I'll have to cover that afterwards. The next step is to give our raft some little bit of more uh, contrast here, do some dry brushing on it. So I'm going to use my Craft Smart suede. I'm gonna use the same brush I used earlier. Dry it up pretty good. I'm just gonna come in and dry brush some of this stuff on this. It doesn't need to be a strong dry brushing. In fact, I'd really rather it wasn't a strong dry brushing. I'm going very light with the brush barely touching things. This, uh, this next step's a little tedious, but it's gonna make it worth it uh, in the end. The detail that it'll add will be worth it. Um, I've got this uh, craft string that I've had for a while now, and I'm going to un unwrap a uh, pretty good length of it, maybe about a foot and a half, two feet worth here. Um, if I have extra, that's okay. Um, what I have here is a long, thin uh, doll needle. And I'm just gonna thread the end of this through. I'm not gonna double it up on itself. I'm going to just pull about an inch and a half, two inches through, and have this be how I pull it through. So to start off, I'm just gonna get it to go through space here. It should be fairly easy to work this in between. If I need to, I can push it down on my craft mat to get it to go through. So I'm having a little bit more trouble than uh, I was hoping to have getting the needle through between the spaces. So I'm just going to widen the gap a little bit in the areas where I'm putting the needle in with just a tiny drill bit on my uh, Dremel here. And I'm just not gonna go very fast, and I'm just gonna go in between and on either side of this log so that I can keep feeding this string down the whole length and make it really easy. We shouldn't have too hard of a time getting this needle through. halfway through doing it I figure out a better way to do it so I'm going to pull these <laughs> stitches back out since nothing's finished yet and give myself a little bit more slack this time to start take some more of my craft string and I'm gonna whip around the top part of the structure to make it look like it was tied up. And then the last thing I'm gonna do for this part is uh, put some whipping on the base of the mast. if this video has been blurry up to this point. I just noticed that my autofocus was disabled, so I've been trying to keep up with it, but if it's blurry as hell. Mm. Okay, next I wanna make a small flag to chill on top of my uh, mast. So I'm going to take a piece of construction paper here. I'm gonna try to just cut out what I'm gonna use. This should be more than enough. I'm gonna cut 
cover this piece with some with a glue stick. Oh, not that glue stick. Now this should work, but I honestly have no idea if it's going to. I'm going to take this piece of tin foil and I'm going to sandwich it in between these two pieces of or in between this piece of construction paper. Fold it in half. Try to get it on there as best I can so that it's even. Now what's the purpose of this you may ask? Well, purpose is twofold. One is to add rigidity and one is to add flexibility. I know that sounds contradictory, but hear me out. When this is dry, whatever shape I cut out of this, I ought to be able to bend and it will keep its shape. Pretty cool. We'll let this dry and then we'll cut out a flag shape for us. this flag any way that I want and it will maintain its shape that is pretty freaking amazing I just got to make a flag that's the right size okay so now what I've done is I've cut a strip of paper towel that is roughly uh, the width of my posts here. And I'm gonna spray it down with uh, this cloth stiffener, which works just as well for paper towels. Once I spray it down, I'll lay it flat, I'll hit it with the hair dryer to, to make it solid, and then I'll come over here and cut it, glue it to the piece, add a little bit of wash to it, and I think we're gonna be done. Our paper towel has been thoroughly stiffened from what you can see here. I can hold it straight out like that and it won't fall. So now what I'm gonna do is figure out where I start gluing it down. Probably the bottom down here. Then I'm gonna come in and make a couple of cuts just below where I want this to come up and wrap around. Cut there. Cut here. Make some more cuts. Wow, this stuff, it's actually tough now. It's really tough. It's actually starting to feel like almost like rice paper. This is cool. Look how solid it made it. look on this uh, than the last time I did a canvas. I'm going to try something a little different to see if it works. I'm going to paint the whole thing using the suede. We're going to see what kind of a result we get in color. And I think this is going to work because this is starting to look pretty good already. white canvasy type look. Now we're gonna weather things up a little bit. Use some good old Agrax Earthshade to brown things up a little bit, make things look a little weathered, a little dirty. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that had quite the unexpected result of making that look an awful lot more like a uh, thatched roof on this thing. So that actually turned out really good. I'm very happy with that. 
So we're gonna keep adding that. Thank you so much everybody for watching. If you like the channel and you like the video, please subscribe and ring that notification icon so you know when I post new content. Also hit the like button and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about this video. I'd like to give a special shout out to my patrons over on Patreon, without whom this video would not have been possible. That being said, if you'd like to become a patron and help support the channel and help it grow, head on over to patreon.com forward slash the dungeon master, link here down somewhere on the screen, and consider becoming a, support, a supporter for as little as $1 a month. You can help this channel be exactly what it is and what you see before you today. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. I've been your dungeon master. Until next time, peace.